I love how you upset people. I can relate to it to some extent, but it, it kind of amuses me because I think they think they're going to upset you when they strike back at you. And I think I know you well enough to realize not it. No, that's not what's going to happen. But boy, okay, I confess, I don't really understand Stephen A. Smith. I don't really know Stephen A. Smith, you know, me in sports, but I know he's like a sports guy at ESPN. I've heard you describe him as the face of ESPN. So just set the table for us on how this death feud got unleashed because, oh, he's mad. He's very mad at you. Yeah, uh, so let's say for lack of a better comparison, Stephen A. Smith is uh, what Bill O'Reilly was to Fox News, whatever, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, You know, biggest star, you know, the guy they lean into the most, they for a long time paid the most. Right now he's not the highest paid guy there, but he, he's kind of the face of the sports media uh, for ESPN. And he's written a memoir uh, called Straight Shooter. And uh, at some point, three, four or five months ago, I decided to read the memoir because we got in a little small scrap four or five months ago. He and Shannon Sharp, a Hall of Fame football player, who have teamed up on uh, Stephen A's morning talk show, uh, took some took some shots at someone that I didn't feel like they were f- being fair and taking those shots. And so I kind of called them out. And, and Stephen A went on his podcast and, and called me fat bastard and, you know, said that he couldn't stand me. And at some point he was going to uh, come after me. And at that point I was like, well, man, Stephen A's got this book out. Let me do a little homework on Stephen A to make sure that, you know, if when he comes after me, I'm just more prepared. And so I I read his memoir, and his memoir is farcical. And my initial thoughts were, after reading it, it was like, man, this, this is kind of like Barack Obama's dreams of my father, that he's planting these little false, fake narratives and making these points that are trying to set him up for a political career. And and then as I read deeper and deeper into the book, and then I started like trying to fact check some of the things he was saying in the book, I was like, oh my God. I mean, there's a lot of fiction in this guy's memoir. There's a lot of things he wrote and said about himself that just don't pass the smell test. And, and the way he, again, he's the face of sports media. He's the highest profile guy highest profile sports pundit in America. And he writes and talks about himself and his former athletic career as a high school player and college player in such a farcical way that you're sitting there like, he doesn't even know sports at all. And, and, and it's like, how can a guy that doesn't understand sports on an elementary level be the face of sports punditry and the biggest voice at ESPN and so at some point I, I I wrote a column in the last week or two about reviewing his book. And then I did a show uh, reviewing his book and put together highlight clips of just outright lies he's told on air about his narrative growing up and as an athlete. And then he'd literally say one thing on ESPN's air and then he'd go on his podcast and completely contradict himself. Uh, and so I just started like raising questions about the facts and the truth of his memoir. And that triggered him uh, this week to put oh, together yeah. 45 minutes. To put minutes it mildly, <laughs> to put it mildly, he was triggered. So he launched in this diatribe against you. He teased that he was going to do it. He was enjoying the feud, I think. And we pulled just a little bit of his response together here in SOT2. He's a no good individual probably the worst individual I've ever had the displeasure of ever being associated with in any capacity. I even took the liberty of calling my pastor to apologize in advance for what I'm going to say about that no good bastard. As a black man, knowing our history, anything worse than a white supremacist. That is until Jason Whitlock came along. I hate this bastard. Not even far more than a little bit. He is the worst human being 
any of you will ever meet. You get within a mile of his presence. Wrap your arms around yourself to protect your soul. <laughs> he is Cain. <laughs> he is a devil. The worst. <laughs> so he's a, a baby. Lot. He's maybe on you. I, he's still making up his yeah. mind. The, I was wrapping my arms around myself, Jason, to protect myself from the evil you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, Megan, I, I watched it and people on my team watched it. And I, I just want to, again, you've been in the media for nearly as long as I have been. I've never seen anybody this high profile in the media that represents their network in that way tape something that unprofessional and air it. The profanity, totally agree. the name call it. I, I and, just, and, and I take just... something so personally. We, If I wanted to show you some of the nastiest hit pieces that have been written about me, personal hit pieces, lie after lie, I don't respond to this nonsense. If you're a public figure, sadly, but it's part of it. It's part of it. Some people are going to hate you. That's how it goes. If you're a true pro, you brush it off and you move on. He's pulling a Meghan Markle, right? He's like, <gasps> can't believe how outrageous and like the ad hominem, you know, attacks on you seems to be his defense. Like Jason's a liar. None of what he says is true. Oh, and also he's, he's I'll put it charitably, has a weight issue and isn't a nice man, but in much more colorful terms. The, the other thing or what frustrates Stephen A., and a lot of people in the sports media is is that I when I'm critical uh, and again I've my entire career I have criticized people in the sports media my peers in the sports media uh, there's no reason for you to know this but you know Mitch Album for in the 90s early 2000s he was the biggest name in sports writing and. Uh, he worked out of De he works out of Detroit, Michigan, and for a time I worked in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We covered the same college basketball team, or uh, the Michigan's Fab Five. He wrote a book about the Fab Five that was farcical. He he put in there that Chris Webber, the biggest star on the team, couldn't afford McDonald's. Uh, you know, and this was back before athletes did this name, image, and likeness. And he was saying Chris Weber couldn't afford a McDonald's. And I remember reviewing the book saying, hey, man, uh, you know, are you kidding me? These guys drive up to the arena every night in brand new SUVs. I've been to Chris Weber's apartment. It's plush. It's laid out far better than mine. How can you tell these farcical, you know, to promote some narrative that they're being exploited when anybody with a brain could see, like, these guys were well compensated and well taken care of. Trashed his Fab Five book. Mitch Album doesn't like me, but he didn't throw a baby like Tantrum because I was critical of his book. Uh, you know, Joe Posnanski wrote a book, again, probably a name you're not familiar with, but he wrote a book about Joe Paterno in the middle of the Joe Paterno controversy at Penn State. And I trashed his book because it was farcical. Joe Posnanski was a colleague of mine for a long time at the Kansas City Star, someone I've known for a long time. He was upset with me. He didn't throw this baby-like tantrum that Stephen A. Smith did, but but where Stephen A. Smith, he wraps himself in his in a lot of his conversations as a black man because of too many people in the black journalism industry and just overall, if they get criticized, they love to say, well, the only reason why you're criticizing is because you're a racist. And I take that away. They can't argue that, you know, I, I, I'm a racist for criticizing Stephen A. Smith. So he came up with a new category. You know, I'm worse than a white supremacist. How I criticize Stephen A. Smith. That's worse than a white supremacist. That's worse than being in the KKK. Criticizing Stephen A. Smith is, is a crime beyond the pale and proves that I'm a devil and, you know, <laughs> I'm a soul snatcher. Yeah, this, this is what he said. He said, he's, he said about you, he's the one who puts himself in front of white folks. Not all white folks, not most white folks, but the white folk that dare we say may have a problem with black folks. Adding, I cannot imagine as a black man knowing our history anything worse than a white supremacist. 
That is, until Jason Whitlock came along. He's worse. He's the worst and the most despicable lying, no good, et cetera. So worse than a white supremacist, it is amazing to see that term busted out against a black man who is criticized. You're saying, I don't believe some of these claims you're making in this memoir. My opinion is you're lying. And that, how does that make you a white supremacist? I don't even follow the argument. I'm, I'm holding Stephen A. Smith to the same standards that I held Mitch Album to. Again, great sports writer in the 80s, 90s, 2000, white guy, Jewish. Uh, Joe Posnanski, white guy, Polish, uh, terrific, had a great reputation as a sports writer. I'm holding Stephen A. Smith to the same standard as them. That's racist. And again, it's like when when you become accustomed to preferential treatment, equal treatment feels like oppression. That's what's going on with Stephen A. Smith oh. and a lot of of black people in the media, these black elites. They don't want equal treatment. They want preferential treatment. And if they you don't give them preferential treatment and if I don't give them preferential treatment, we're evil and wicked. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make a resolution that's easy to keep and delivers immediately on its promise. With Genucel Skincare, you can turn back the clock and look 5, 10, even 15 years younger. And right now, Genucel Skincare is celebrating 2024 with its New Year's sales event. Save over 70% off all your Genucel must-haves in their most popular package. Say goodbye. Those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, sagging jawlines, dark marks, skin redness, even under eye bags, and leave them behind in 2023. For women and men, safe for all skin types and perfect for skin of any age. Plus, with its immediate effects product, Genucel promises results guaranteed or 100% of your money back. For a limited time, Genucel's top selling hyaluronic acid serum is included free in every most popular package. Maximum skin hydration for a more youthful appearance. Go to genucel.com slash MK60 and enter MK60 at checkout for extra savings. Every order upgraded to free shipping. Don't wait. Genucel.com slash MK60. G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.